welcome to your celebration. Introducing the class of 2020. For the rest of your life, every time you look at your certificate, you won't see a piece of paper. You'll see a reminder of everything you achieved during your time at BU. This is not a piece of paper. This is so much more. This is four years of my life. This is one year of my life. This is absolute, unwavering focus. This is sleepless nights before arrivals meet. This is awkward conversations with total strangers. This is the amazing friends they became. This is the nerves I felt starting my placement year. This is the confidence I felt once it was done. This is late nights in the library. This is early morning runs on the beach. This is big nights out and long nights in. This is spending hours on an assignment. This is binning it the night before and starting again. This is passing it anyway. This is color-coded revision timetables. This is the black and white of discipline. This is everything I learned on the units I passed. This is everything I learned on the exam that I failed. This is juggling my research and my job. This is overcoming disappointment. This is beating adversity. This is resubmitting. This is never giving up. This is redemption. This is knowing that I can do this and I will do this. This is not being able to go home and see my family. This is no summer ball. This is no end of year night out. This is not saying goodbye in person. This is not shaking my lecturer's hand. This is not hugging the classmates. This is us celebrating online when we should have been celebrating together. This is every Am I On You in a Zoom seminar. This is the bedroom that became a lecture theatre. This is the class WhatsApp banter group that became a class WhatsApp support group. This is two fingers to COVID-19. This is knowing that if I can succeed here, in these circumstances, then I can succeed anywhere, in any circumstances. This is not a piece of paper. This is so much more. Introducing Professor John Vinnie, Vice-Chancellor of Bournemouth University. Thank you to the 40 graduates who helped to make that brilliant film. And welcome to your graduate celebration event. As your Vice-Chancellor, I'm delighted to be able to join you live today. And it is fantastic to see so many of you here. This is an opportunity for, for us to celebrate with you while we wait for a time when we can get together in person. The motto of this university is discere mutari est, which means to learn is to change. And you have learned and changed so much over the course of your time at BU, and we have learned from you. Our vision for BU is based on the fusion of education, research, and professional practice, making what you have learned relevant and equipping you for the future. Life at university is about so much more than studying. The other activities you took part in were also opportunities to grow and develop and to make friends you will stay in touch with for the rest of your lives. Events of the last year have demonstrated to everyone the importance and value of your disciplines and the opportunities for the future in a world where people have had to overcome challenges and embrace new ways of doing things. I also want to acknowledge on behalf of BU and our wider community the contribution made by our students and staff who have supported our communities at BU locally, nationally and globally during your time with us through working and volunteering, supporting the public sector and charities and helping neighbours and colleagues. Thank you for everything that you've done. Your journey from now will require you to continually learn, change and adapt and it will not be easy but you've already demonstrated that you're up for a challenge and each one of you has demonstrated true commitment and resilience. You can be proud of everything you've achieved as we are extremely proud of you. Alongside your academic achievements, these skills will be the launch pad for the next steps on your amazing journey. Education is about changing lives, our own lives and the lives of those around us. 
and it helps us to leave the world a better place than we found it. And I know that you will all go on to make a magnificent difference in whatever you choose to do next. So congratulations to each and every one of you. And now let's celebrate. Introducing Jonathan Good, Head of Alumni Relations at Bournemouth University. Good afternoon and welcome. I am really pleased to introduce our keynote speaker for today's event, Max McMurdo. Max is a designer, author and TV presenter who has appeared on shows including BBC's Dragon's Den, Channel 4's Amazing Spaces, and ITV's 10K Holiday Home. Most recently, Max has been working with Discovery to film Cash in the Spare Room and The Weekend Workshop. Max graduated from BU's Product Design Visualization degree in 2000, and throughout his career has championed sustainable approaches to design with a particular focus on upcycling. So without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to you and to say welcome, Max. Thank you very much. Cool. That, that sounded fantastic. I like the sound of me. Um, firstly, congratulations to all the students. This year has been bonkers. I don't know how you've coped. Um, but also congratulations to the lecturers for the way they've had to adapt to teaching the courses. And also congratulations to your kidneys for the last four years of drinking in the fire station. I know it took my body a long time to recover. That fire station's got a lot to answer for. Now, as you said, I graduated in 2000 under very different circumstances. That was 20 years ago, I've just realised. Now, we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have 3D printing, but we also didn't have a world pandemic. So I kind of, I think in the balance of things, it was roughly the same experience. But um, I hope that all of the students have had a fantastic time. I look back now and it was definitely the best four years of my life. 
And probably the time I changed the most, as I think a lot of the students will agree. I remember the first day I turned up in green tracksuit bottoms, a silver puffer jacket, and I shared accommodation with a guy from Bristol with a big fringe listening to grunge music and drinking cans of Stella like they were orange squash. And he's gone on to become like lead engineer at McLaren and I live in a shipping container. So you never know what's going to happen. It never goes completely to plan. And I think it's fair to say that lots of courses at university, people will tell you, it doesn't really matter what you study. Study anything. and It just shows people that that you can apply yourself, that you can study, that you can learn and absorb information. But I don't think that's true with design. As you can tell, I'm quite passionate about design. But for me, it's a lot more than that. About 85% of students that went on my course, product design and visualization, have gone on to actually have a career in the creative arts, in design and in engineering. So I think product design is such a fantastic course. Now, design itself, however, is, I found, quite tough. I think part of the course is coming up with these dream ideas, nurturing your designs and your thoughts, turning them into like your baby. Then you stand up and you pitch them and you present them to each other. And in a creative environment, that's tough, but at least you have the, the sensitivity of your fellow students, of your lecturers. Everybody's in the same boat and you kind of put an arm around each other virtually at the moment and you champion each other and you support each other and you develop these ideas together. However, the next step for you guys is to go into the big wide world where most people are rubbish. They're boring. They don't support you. They don't want your ideas to necessarily work. And your job from now on is to come up with, in my opinion, some quite daft ideas, thinking outside the box, innovative future technologies, sustainable energies. You've got to be thinking about the future, presenting that to people who are accountants, who wear terrible suits, um, like people who aren't on your journey, who don't understand your passion for design. So I don't want to kind of be negative, but... The next step is the really important bit where you go out there and you can truly make a difference. Because for me, design is an honour and a privilege. Now, I play about with design. We do TV shows where, let's be honest, occasionally they might edit out some of my mistakes when I blow myself up, for example. However, it is such a privilege and an honour. You can change the world. You've got to stay strong, stay playful, continue to push the boundaries, thinking outside the box. And it sounds so over the top, but you can make the world a better place, whether it's I've been so fortunate. I've built schools in Kenya. I've been involved in upcycling shows about saving stuff from landfill, about um, changing perceptions on sustainable energy, solar panels and all of these wonderful things. And then people start to listen to you. And it's up to us to potentially change the world, even if it's just by a little bit. I remember Trevor Bayliss came to visit us at Bournemouth University when I studied there. And it just blew our minds that he'd invented a clockwork radio that changed the way Africa was able to listen to the news and weather. And, and there he was in front of us. So I'm not comparing myself to River Bayless by any means, but it is a fantastic opportunity. And I'd just like to end by saying that life doesn't go to plan. This speech hasn't gone to plan. Nothing ever goes as you imagine it to be, particularly in the design world. When you come up with this incredible idea and it goes off on this wonderful journey and tangent and becomes something completely different. But please don't rely on this degree. It is a wonderful piece of paper. It's more than a piece of paper, as we just saw. However, it's up to you now to be nice, be hardworking and ultimately don't be an idiot. Just be nice. Thank you, Max. I think that's probably a piece of advice we can all remember and, and take away from your talk, but really appreciate those words of, of encouragement um, and advice to our, our new graduates. Just a couple of questions, um, if I may. I mean, you talked about this importance of being brave or having to be brave when pitching your ideas to those who might be sceptical or unreceptive. How do you balance taking on feedback, which might be important in developing a, an idea or a concept, with holding on to that belief that, you know, yes, this, this idea that I've got can succeed and is the right idea in the first instance. That's really tough, actually, because you can't just bury your head in the sand and pretend that none of the criticism is valid and, you know, it doesn't exist. So I think our people, uh, one of my bugbears is if you come up with an idea, somebody, a troll on one of the social media platforms who doesn't even put a face to their own profile, you can ignore them for a start, you know. Um, I think it's listen to all of the criticism or the feedback, 
And you probably know as a designer the frailties within your idea before you even pitch it. You And you've either covered them already because you are concerned yourself, so you're fully aware of the probable concerns other people will have, and you will very quickly have an answer for them. Um, and if it's something new by somebody you respect who is probably experienced and seems to know their stuff, then unfortunately you've got to get your own ego and you've got to put it to one side and say, okay, you've got to listen to these people. And quite often, like I say, you've already considered the feedback. And if not, it's time to, to consider it and thank them all graciously for, for what they've mentioned so many times. Um, people give us feedback after a TV show, for example, you should have done this. If a sentence starts with you should have, ignore it. If the person can't dress up, I think a skill that designers learn when we're analysing each other's work is to, is to word things gently, to ask questions and not make bold, critical statements. So it's a very difficult part of the process. You can't just be headstrong, head buried in the sand. You've got to listen to criticism. But at the same time, like we've said, you can't let them beat you down because the majority of people don't want innovation. They don't want to do something new. My, my worst experience is when you're doing a small building project and there's tradespeople who go, we've always done it that way, mate. I've done it that way for 20 years. For us as creatives, that's a very good reason to change it and to look at doing it differently. But to them, they want to use the same old tools, the same old techniques and stay within their comfort zone. So, yeah, I've not I've not answered your question at all there. It's very no, hard. It's all about <laughs> it's all about that balance. And some of that tension, I guess, is what is what produces the best ideas in, in the end. I mean, my second question really follows on from that. I mean, I got a sense from your talk that you still find a real joy in design and you talked about being sort of playful with design how personally do you stay creative and playful when when things perhaps aren't going so well or a project turns into a long slog or feels like a long slog yeah that's another good question you're um you you should be a lecturer or something uh i, <laughs> I think i i probably break my challenge down into little segments so quite often it's easy to get fixated by the long goal by, for example, building, I'm living in my houseboat at the moment. This is a 40 foot shipping container. And as an entire project, it was so big that it was almost overwhelming. So I just broke it down into segments and therefore kind of easy wins. So if you end up on a project where it doesn't go particularly well, maybe the client, because the client's always right, of course, they're not, but you have to play that game. Um, accept that they're diluting your design, accept that they need to hit commercial um like targets that there's budget constraints there's time constraints except those things are going to dilute your dream but maybe pick some shorter easy wins so try and inject a little bit of innovation a little bit of um, alternative energies a little bit of environmental friendliness because it might just be that one little small nugget at this stage in this project might actually inspire your client to think differently about the next project and they might want to work with you again. But again, it's a balance, I guess, of keeping the client happy that you're coming in on target for this project, but you're satisfying your own cravings to be innovative and to push the boundaries um, and to feel that you're doing the design world justice as well. So basically, it's all a balancing act, isn't it? That's what we've established. <laughs> A good, a good place to finish, a good theme around balance there. And I'm sure some of those words will resonate with those uh, here at the event today. So Max, it just leaves me to say a huge thank you for taking time out to come back and support us today. So thank you on behalf of all of us here at BU and uh, yeah, wish you all well for the future. Thank you for having me and congratulations to everyone once again. Thank you. Announcing the Rosemary Pope Memorial Prize. I am delighted to present the Rosemary Pope Memorial Prize. This prize is awarded for the most outstanding contribution made by a graduate who has progressed to a BU Honours programme with a partner college or who has achieved their BU award with a partner college. The winner achieved exceptional groundbreaking standards of work in 3D CGI architectural visualisation. And the winner who cannot be with us live today is Matthew Richards. Very well done to Matthew. Now, everybody, this is your moment. Please clap and cheer and turn your camera on so we can see you on screen.
Come on. A big well done to you all. Now step out into the world and use your new skills and knowledge to make the world a better place. Well done. We've had a great time, spent many hours debugging code together, and you've done really well. I'm very proud of you, and I wish you all the best. Hello, Game Design graduates. It was my great pleasure and incredible experience teaching you and working with you. Well done for all your great achievements at BU. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors and please keep in touch. Congratulations on mine and behalf of the whole Game Design course team. Well done, everybody. Um, I hope to see you in person sometime um, in the near future. Just um, well done, all you project students, and uh, uh, I just hope you're doing well. You did remarkably well last year, and I look forward to seeing you in person as soon as we can. Keep in touch. Hello and congratulations on your graduation. It's been a real pleasure having you here over the last three or four years. So good luck with your future careers and stay in touch. Well done everybody. You've worked really hard this year and well done for all your success. Congratulations. I am so pleased to have this opportunity on behalf of the whole of the board of Bournemouth University to congr congratulate you, our graduates, on successfully completing your degrees. We are also very, very proud of you and are delighted for you, your family, and your supporters on what is a fantastic achievement. I know that I speak for all of the BU board when I say that there is no one more important in our university than our students. And we all take great pride in what you have achieved and indeed what we know you're going to achieve throughout your lives. I have served Bournemouth University in one capacity or another for nearly 40 years. Like you, I'm also a graduate of Bournemouth University and I know that, that nearly everything I have achieved in my professional life I owe to my time at this amazing institution. 
Finally, I would like to thank all of the staff at BU who have worked so hard to help you to realise your dreams today. We all wish you every success in all that you do in the future. And I hope that you will keep in touch with us and always look back with great affection on the time you spent at Bournemouth University. Well done, congratulations and good luck. Congratulations to the class of 2020. As a former student, I can definitely agree that 2020 was the toughest academic year one could have ever experienced. But you did it because you are here and we are here to celebrate you and to congratulate you. And we know that you are going to achieve so much more in the future. Congratulations to you all from the Subaru Student Opportunities Team. Yay! Introducing the Executive Dean for the Faculty of Science and Technology, Professor Keith Felt. So we're now nearly at the end of our celebration today, and I hope it's given you a sense of renewed pride in just how much you've achieved during your time at BU. I look forward to celebrating again soon in person when we're able to do so safely. In the meantime, I hope that you take what you've learned and use it to make a positive difference to your life and the lives of others. So please do stay and mingle virtually with friends and colleagues later. Once more, please do stay safe and see you again soon. Congratulations.